Hi everyone, welcome to Learning Impact. In today's lecture, we will discuss types of social group on the basis of identification. So let's start. Okay, first we have to look into definition of what is social group. Social group refers to two or more people who interact with one another. They share similar characteristics and they collectively have a sense of unity. It means that to form a social group, there are some criteria. It means that there must have more than one individual, means that there are, must have minimum two individual or more than two, and there must have some kind of interaction that exists among these individuals. This interaction might be formal or informal. It might have, it might follow some rigid structure or, inf uh, or flexible structure. It, it might be direct interaction, face-to-face -face interaction or indirect. And this, uh, the individuals must share some similar characteristic means that this interaction that exists among the individual must be based on some similar characteristic that exists among these individuals. The similar characteristic might include the uh, hobbies that mostly the individuals share or it may have any shared interest. Uh, for example, the students of the same class, uh, they have the similar characteristic that they are all the they all study under the same a similar educational setting and they collectively have a sense of unity. It means that they all must be entitled to the same tag. For example, um, for example, I say that the a student of the uh, particular class of any particular uh, university. So they have some sense of unity because they will all identify themselves to that specific tag which I assigned to them. So social group must have two or more individual. There must have interaction exist among them. There must have some similar characteristic and collectively have a sense of unity. Now example of the social group might be for example the family unit. Family unit is uh, consist of two or more people means the couple and children there are interaction that exists in the family unit the interaction might be casual interaction mostly and it is informal they share similar characteristic that similar characteristic is that they all are uh, blood relatives and they collectively have a sense of unity because they all belong to the same group so they can find hope and uh, give emotional support to each other because they all are actually tagged as a similar family, as a members of the similar family. Now, peer group, for example, the group of friends, they, it, the uh, group friends also have two or more people. There are also interaction exist among them, and there are also some similar characteristic. The similar characteristic actually define the basis of their friendship. Means that the peer group, it might be uh, because that these all. Uh, these all friends were actually the class fellows in university or maybe because they are actually neighbors of each other. So there might be some basis on the basis of which the peer group form. And there, uh, the ex example of the social group also includes society. Society is viewed mostly, uh, uh, is mostly viewed the largest social group. So largest social group is the society means that when we look at the society, there are people who interact, there are some similar characteristics. Although in society, there are diverse social groups. So there are also similarities and dissimilarities. But the similarities also act as a, a base for the interaction exist among the individuals. For example, I'm a sociology professor, so uh, I will I share my this characteristic to the other sociology professors to which I to whom I interact and also for example as I am female so I share the similar characteristic with the women group that exists in our society so I will identify myself to the women group so we can say that society is actually the largest social group okay then what is social identity as we discussed that in today's lecture, we will discuss types of social group on the basis of identification. So before we go into details of the that types of the social group, we have first look into what does it mean by identification. It means that we must first define the social identity. So social identity refers to people's self-categorization in relation to their group membership, the we. It means that individuals, they self-categorize themselves according to the group membership because they identify themselves to a particular group. So they identify or categorize themselves according to their identity. Now, that ident this social identity, it might be on the basis of various factors. Here are some factors that are mentioned. For example, it may be on the basis of geography. 
I am uh, the, my regional geog my uh, region where I have born is actually my geography. So it actually give me a social identity. For example, I have uh, I have born in Pakistan, so it is actually my identity. Political outlook, what kind of the political ideology do you support? Either you're conservative or liberal, to which political identity you identify yourself, that is your political outlook. Also on the basis of social prestige, that for example, individual is for upper class, so they, they actually identify themselves or they categorize themselves to the upper class because of their lifestyle. So this is actually their social identity. Remember that the social identity is actually the self-categorization, means it is not something that has been uh, written by the government of Pakistan, which has been assigned by any government of the country, or, you know, it is it is not something which is uh, mentioned in the religion or which is uh, classified by the other, but it is the individual themselves who classify themselves. Uh, they think of their on uh, they think about the, um, themselves and they then try to categorize themselves in a specific category of society. Now, for example, gender, as I'm born female so of course i will categorize myself to the women category because when i look at the male category i saw some differences some distinctions that is the biological difference that's why i don't identify myself to the male category this is the self categorization i categorize myself into a women category just because of the gender which i have acquired by birth so this is all the factors of the social identity there are also some other factors of the social identity the other factors include race. It may be on the basis of age. For example, either you are a teenager or you are adult or you are a, a young or old. These all are the different age stages to whom uh, to whom age stage you identify yourself is your social identity. Sexual orientation, either individual is homosexual or heterosexual. Religion, either one believe you know, what kind of the belief system an individual. Uh, entitled to either they believe to the in the religion of Islam either they believe in faith of Hinduism or any other um, also different religions exist in the society so what kind of religion do you believe is your social identity what is your class uh, what is the social identity might be on the basis of particular ability or it might be on the basis of disability for example the I'm a sociology professor is my ability so i will identify myself to all other sociology sociology professors that exist in my society i will learn from them uh, on different occasion i will try to interact with them i'll try to approach them for the different uh, you know um, tips uh, tips and tricks so in this way for example an individual is known for their mathematics skills in society that is their ability so they identify themselves to different mathematicians because they learn about them so they will view their identity just similar to the other mathematical uh, mathematics uh, skill uh, individuals this ability for example one is born with disability for example one is suffering from polio which is disability uh, so all the other polio victims, they will, you know, feel a sense of emotional uh, unity to them because they are themselves in a misery condition. So the disability can also be a cause of the social identity. Manner of dress, uh, what kind of the dress you prefer for yourself? So you actually then uh, view the others who prefer the same choice that you prefer, you actually feel a sense of unity towards such people just because of the similar characteristic that exists among uh, the people. So these are all the different bases of different factors of the social identity. And there are also, these are not limited, okay? Social identity, it can be, it can be because of any basis, okay? Uh, there are unlimited reasons or factors behind the social identity. Now, in-group and out-group, they are based on the idea that we have value traits and they lack. Like. And the factors which we discuss, these are all the factors in general, which actually are the factors of the social identity. But what about the in-group and out-group? What is the factor of the in-group and out-group classification? In-group and out-group uh, classification actually based on the idea that we and they it actually include we and they means that they view the members of their own group as we members and they uh, they look at the members of the our group as they members so when there are the you know the uh, concept arise of they and we then in this case the in group and our group form 
Okay, so types of social group on the basis of identity. There are two types of social group on the basis of identity. What is identity? We have discussed it is self categorization and the types of the social group are in group and out group. This classification of social group was given by William Graham Sumner. Now, before we go into details of what is in group and out group and what did uh, William Graham Sumner tell us about the in group and out group, we have first look into the pre biography of who was William Graham Sumner and what was his contribution in sociology. Okay, William Graham Sumner was American clergyman. Clergyman, uh, so he was actually American uh, priest. Clergyman are actually the religious leader and he was a social scientist. Social scientists are professionals who use the scientific method to study human society and individual relationship and he was a neoclassical liberal. Now it was his brief biography. He actually gives some following concepts. In sociology, Folk Quiz was his important work which he uh, actually it was his important book which he published in 1906. And this Folk Quiz term was first introduced by the William Graham Sumner in sociology. And in this book, Folk Quiz, he actually introduced the other term which was the ethnocentrism. And he actually defined ethnocentrism as uh, called for um, Court to court that the technical name for the view of things in which one's own group is the center of everything and all others are scale and rated with reference to it. So he was actually the first. This book with book provide insight into the customs and norms that shape human behavior and interaction. He was the first who actually introduced this term of ethnocentrism in sociology. And he was also the first who coined the term of mores. Mores and Fox was the terms, these uh, folk ways, ethnocentrism and mores were the term coined by the William Graham in sociology. He actually distinguished between the folk ways and the mores. Folk ways which he was referring as right versus wrong and uh, mores which is considered right versus root. Now he also uh, did his contribution, uh, he also made his contribution in the natural sciences. In chemistry he gave the concept of diffusion which was considered a uh, very popular and prominent contribution. This concept of diffusion which uh, actually he explained by giving the statement that the ratio of the diffuse rate of the two gases is same as the ratio of the square root of the molar masses of gases. This was considered the um, William Graham Samner law in chemistry okay so this was all about his contribution and brief biography now let's discuss the in group and out group okay what is in group and out group in sociology <clears throat> In group is the group with which all individuals they identify themselves that is considered their in group as its name indicate in it means that you become part of that group so in group is actually the group with which individual identify themselves for example i am a female so i identify myself to the women group i am sociology professor so i will not identify myself to the biology, uh, biology professor or the chemistry professor i will identify myself to the sociology professor or to the field of sociology. For example, I born to a particular family. So of course, I will identify myself to that family in which I born. I will not identify myself to the family that is outside or in which I haven't born. So this in group is actually, uh, for example, it may be on the basis of family that one's family, one's college, the particular college from which I have graduated, so I will classify myself to their college, one's profession. Now, when you look at the examples of this in group, there is one term which is repeatedly mentioned, that is one's, one's family, one's college, one's profession. It actually, when we use the word once uh, in beginning, it means that we're actually uh, referring to the in group, okay? In group is this in relation to an out group. As long as there is a concept of the out group, the concept of in group will persist in society. It means that in group actually exists in relation to an out group. For example, if we, uh, if we, uh, uh, you know, um, abolish the concept of the out group. For example, in uh, in our society, there is no other professor than sociology professor. There is only sociology professors that is in society. I know it's impossible, but just suppose it, that there are all the professors are sociology professors, then there will be no out group for me. So there, of course, the in-group 
which I belong just because of my profession will no longer exist because there will no other outgrow because there are no other professors except the sociology professors in my society as there are other professors like the biology professors the chemistry professors the demography professors community all the different fields is have been uh, taught uh, there are uh, professors in various academic field that's why it means that there are out group is that's why there is a concept of in group now, for example, in case of one's college, for example, in my society, there is only one college to whom to which I have also graduated. So I will not able then to call myself, you know, as one's college, uh, as my college, because there is no other college exist in my society. So as long as there are out group exist, then there will in group persist in our society. So in group actually exists in relation to an out group and it is necessary that the out group and in group both will exist in our society because the society uh, it is homo it is heterogeneous society society is not homogeneous it is heterogeneous there are various social groups that exist in our society there are diversity in almost every aspect of society for example if we look at the profession there is a wide range of diversity that's why there is a concept of in group and out group Okay, then characteristics of in-group. Characteristics of in-group include that members, for example, they feel loyalty and respect to each other. The members of the in-group, they will feel loyalty and respect because they will consider all as the we members. They, it proceed with the pronoun my, for example, my college, my family, my profession. There is a sense of belongingness. For example, I say that is uh, my college. So there is a sense of belongingness that actually i belong i was belonging to that college we feelings there are we feelings means that the individual they actually cooperate with each other they actually view uh, all the members of uh, the all the members of the in group as their own members so they actually encourage each other they motivate each other there is no sense of opposition exist among them there is actually a sense of belongingness a sense of uh, cooperation is exist among them recognition and helpfulness they help each other in times of need it is actually based on ethnocentrism ethnocentrism means that individual they look at their own values and traits is superior over another it means that they actually feel proud on their in group so ethnocentric behavior when it go an extreme it can lead even to the genocidal uh, thoughts for example if one in group they tend to superior uh, give superiority to their own in group to their own culture to their own value traits and they look down upon the other cultures for uh, it will lead to the you know sometime when the hatreds it gone sometime when the hatred gone extreme it will lead to the genocide for example what the nazis had done to the jews it was actually based on the extreme ethnocentric behavior in case of the in-group, the individuals show positive attitudes towards each other because they all motivate each other, they, uh, you know, support each other uh, because they view the, they view each other as a companions. There is a sense of cooperation. They are to sacrifice themselves for a group in order to make their group more prosperous as compared to the out group. So even at the time when uh, it depends on a type of group, but also they even uh, ready to sacrifice everything for the prosperity of their own group internal conflicts they are usually resolved easily okay exclusion from an in-group it is uh, from a historic background we see that there are some historic uh, you know um, for example historic in case of the what the nazis had done to the jews there was um, a history which tells us that when the exclusion from an in-group feelings it become more and more extreme or violent it can lead to a brutal process for example in case of the most primitive societies they were treating outsiders as part of the animal kingdom because they were themselves viewing they were viewing themselves as part of the human race and they were they were looking at others as the part of animal kingdom uh, the Nazis exclude Jews from human race and they were characterizing Jew slaughter as the removal of racial biological race. In this way, we can say that the in-group, out-group feelings, it should not be 
you know it should not go on such extreme that it leads to more brutal and violent process okay so this was one of the example that uh, either in mostly in most cases exclusion from an in group is not such kind of the brutal uh, process but at the time when it leads to the more extreme and violent thoughts then it can be brutal like this okay it was one of uh, one example from the historical background okay then what is out group out group refers to those group with which individual they don't identify themselves for example if i am a student of particular class so i will not identify myself to students of other classes members of other families citizens of other nation for example i am from pakistan so i will not identify myself with the other uh, with the people of other nationality because they are different from me uh, um, you know on the basis of nationality so this is considered for example i am pakistani so all the other nationality uh, all the other citizens of the other nation they are all out, out group for me and the pakistani uh, community is an in group for me okay so this was the out group out group expressed by in group as they members because when we refer to the out group we refer uh, we uh, you know um, indicate the individuals of the out group as they members or we can say the other members the other class the other families the other nationalities okay okay there are some characteristics of out group the expectation depends on a kind of out group what do you expect from your out group depends on a kind of out group for example if i you know i am uh, girl so i identify myself to a women group and what do, for me be as for example if we take the uh, gender for me the out group would be the male category now what did i what do i uh, what i expect from the male category from the male out group this expectation differ uh, for example in case uh, when you know uh, as we discuss exclusion from an in group process that the jews the jews were excluded by the nazis from an in group now their expectation are different as compared to what i expect from the male category so now the expectation depends on what kind of the out group exist uh, you know uh, what kind of out group is this or what is the nature of that out group so it depends unfair and negative views by the in group mostly the out group members and um, they are actually viewed by in group as you know more unfair and negative because they are mostly considered as a competitors there is a sense of competition or opposition they express as others or they there is a low communication or ineffective one out group members uh, for example as being a pakistani i have a strong communication or effective one with the members of you know my own people people from my country as compared to the outsiders and for example fam um, my own family which is in group for me i have a strong communication uh, with my parents and with my siblings as compared to the others so in case of the out group they there is a low communication mostly if communication is this it is ineffective one it is not such as strong as in case of the in group negative stereotypes may exist it is mostly if we look in our surrounding mostly in case of the religious uh, based out group there are negative stereotypes for example the you know the other religious they look down upon the muslim community muslim community for the other religious people this consider out group also for muslims the other religious uh, for example the christian the jews the hindus these all are considered out group for the muslim if we take the example of the religion based in group out group so there might be some negative stereotype that exist or that is stick to a particular out group and there is a potential for external conflicts and misunderstandings as it can propagate stereotypes of course there can be a threats of uh, conflict and misunderstanding and limited or no identification with group members they mostly do not identify themselves to a particular group is considered an out group okay now in group out group relation it can have some more implications now what does it mean uh, these moral implications is more usual and it is mostly observable in our everyday life for example people they are more sympathizer towards the towards the same gender for example uh, i am 
female so i identify myself to a women group now i am more sympathizer towards the women who are suffering from the domestic violence as compared to men who are suffering from domestic violence so it is something uh, it may be because of the gender that women they are more sympathizer when they hear about the you know news on the domestic violence uh, regarding women but they become although they will also condemn in case of men but in case of men their sympathy does not go to it does not uh, go to that extreme as it was in case of the women so it may be because that the, they view the women as part of their in group just because of the gender it is their in groups that's why the violence against women it actually view by women as you know threat to uh, it is considered a threat to their own gender a threat to herself also so people they are more sympathizer towards the same gender so of course when man is also suffering from the domestic violence women is also but you look at the women at with more sympathy as compared to men so of course it will lead to more implication it is immoral that both are suffering from the same domestic violence but just because that you identify with a particular gender or you are, you identify the particular in group so you become more sympathizer towards the uh, one gender and not towards the other then example may be other like people discriminate against the members of the political movements if one political movement to uh, which you support uh, which an individual support they actually discriminate against the members of the other political movements which is considered out group for them people show negative attitudes toward the other religious faith as we discussed that there are this actually leads to the negative stereotypes that muslims are viewed by the other religious groups as you know um, more conservative or backward it may be you know it is actually the stereotyping this is a negative attitude and it might be possible that muslims they view the others as um, as strange to their culture so these are actually lists for example the islamophobia the hate ideologies the anti-semitism these all are the ideologies based on the religious faith and this is because of the in-group out-group relation people view behavior as rough and dirty by opposing team for example you uh, individual they go to the stadium and they support a particular team they will uh, judge and evaluate the uh, the performance of their own team members differently as compared to the members of the opposing team they will actually set the unequal uh, standard criteria for them they will actually view behavior of the opposing opposing team as rough and dirty so this uh, in this discriminating behavior actually leads to the moral implications when it uh, when a question come about the in and out group relationship okay okay in group and out group relation how it actually ev um, get evolved over time in case of the primitive society it, it was so in group out group relation was so simple because there was a clear boundary of in group and out group because it was based on kinship so in case of the society, the least advanced primitive societies who are actually living in small isolated bands, which are usually which were usually clans of kinsfolk. So it was kinship which located one's in group and out group. So when two strangers they met, the first thing they had to do was establish the relationship. So if kinship could be established and they were friends, both members of the in group, and if no relationship could be established then in many societies they were enemies and they were acting accordingly so in primitive societies it was uh, straightforward and clear because there was only one basis mostly the most prominent base was the kinship but in case of the modern society it is more complicated and overlapping boundaries of in group out group because people belong to many groups because there is now a huge diversity of the social groups that exist in our society so in modern society people belong to so many groups that a number of their in group and out group relationship they may over overlap now for example the members of the senior class they treat freshmen as an out group most of the time but in the stadium they both unite as an in group cheering for the same team similarly those who have an in group relationship as members of the same church maybe in different political parties members who work together in a pta may find that they are no longer in the same in group when someone plans a, a party at a country club
So there are in modern society, there is more chances of the overlapping boundaries of in-group and out-group. Okay, then in-group and out-group social group actually exists in various social contexts. When we look in our surrounding, in our society, almost in every social aspect, there is an in-group and out-group exists. But there are some different social uh, settings that has been mentioned in which there is a, a more prominent possibilities of in-group and out-group, like school setting. An uh, individual who is part of a particular class is, co is considered his in-group and all the other classes are his outgroup. For example, in case of the workplace, in workplace there are small team works, uh, team groups. Sorry, there are small team groups in which the individuals they work together. These uh, small work teams are also called as a uh, task groups. So they have been assigned by uh, they have been assigned different tasks. So individual who is part of a particular task group is his uh, in group, and all the other task groups are his out group. Also, sports fan that what particular team do you support so the crowd who is uh, cheering for the team to which you support is actually your in group and all the other individuals who actually support your opposing team will consider you will view them as an outsiders as their members then the generation differences for example the z generation they actually view the uh, other generations, the, uh, their ancestors as an outgroup because of their different values and cultures. Religious affiliations, as we discussed, the members of the different religious faith, they view each other as an outgroup. Social class, what kind of social class do you belong? For example, in case of the Indian society, either you, you are from Brahman, you are from uh, Dalit, what kind of uh, category do you follow? Uh, you, uh, sorry, what kind of uh, category do you identify? So it will consider you a social class and all the other will consider you a uh, outgroup. Okay, it may be on the base of ethnicity or race. For example, like which, what kind of language do you uh, speak? It also identify your in-group nationality and also your gender. And also there are online communities. Uh, uh, due to the advancement of technology, there is now in-group and out-group base, uh, which is formed in in the form of the online community. So there are various in-group and out-group social groups that exist in our society. When we give focus to any social context or social setting that exists um, in our society, in our surrounding. Okay, then at the last, we will discuss a small um, concept which is related to the in-group and out-group, that is the social distance. Now, what does it mean by the social distance? The concept of the social distance refers to a degree of closeness or acceptance which feels towards the other group. How much two groups, which is considered in and out group, how much they are actually uh, refer, how much there is a degree of closeness exists among them. It means that the in group members, how much they are close to the out group members. What uh, up to what extent they accept the members of the out group either the feelings based on you know more hostile feelings or either it is not uh, either it is neutral feelings either it is um, not host um, you know it's less hostile so the degree of closeness or acceptance we feel for the other group is considered the social distance now this concept of social distance was given by Bogardis this actually wire either by direct, direct observation of people interacting or offer by questionnaire. Uh, we actually measure this by uh, direct observation. For example, uh, unwillingness to live next door to a family of a different race. It would indicate a high degree of social distance. On the other hand, willingness to marry a person of a different race, it would indicate a very low degree of social distance. And it may be measured by through the questionnaire. When we give a question and ask questions about the other outgroups, <coughs> and then in this way, the social distance can be measured. Feelings of feelings of social distance they are greater in some societies than other depends on a types of society and how much the society is uh, diverse and what kind of uh, you know pluralism exists in a society it depends it affects the social distance so the social distance scale is only an attempt to measure one's feeling of unwillingness to associate equally with a group okay now for example a social distance test which was actually administered to white students in 1972 in us and to the south african whites around the same time 
Okay, around the same time in 1962, it was also administered to a South African wives, and it was then concluded that the South African wives they have high social distance between black and white than in case of the U.S. And it means that the South African society it was more it the people they were more. Uh, uh, there were more discrimination between the whites and blacks as compared to in case of the U.S., where the social distance towards white and black it was not so much uh, um, so much high as in case of the South Africa. So in society where the social distance it is less, it means that the society will have more chances of becoming diverse and pluralism and it will become more tolerant society as compared to a society where there is a high social distance means that people are even unwilling to live next door to a family of a different race of course it would lead to the uh, less it would lead to the intolerant society okay so this was uh, all about the in group out group and uh, its more impl implications and the social distance so this was the end of our lecture Thank you so much for watching. Leave your questions in the comment section below and like.